Bennett. It's Rachel Foreman. Foreman, yeah. I've met her somewhere before. Hmm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Inside the Mental Health. I'm Bob Bevan, your host, and, 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 and on the far end is a co-host, Dr. Richard uh, Phelps, uh, connoisseur of food, uh, wine, I'm kidding, not wine, <laughs> food, music, and he's a computer genius, and he's my friend. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Bob. And, and, and we're honored once again to have uh, Clarice Gallo. Ga Gallego. Gallego. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, okay. On, and she will be talking about Focus Clubhouse again. She was on the show uh, a few weeks ago, and she's, she's, uh, she's one of the leaders in trying to get a Focus Clubhouse uh, in Lafayette. And, and and we will let her, we will turn the the, uh, the the show over to her after we go with our prayer. And I'll start off with the prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in great joy to know that you are watching our steps and that you are delivering us from any uh, any missteps we make, and that you're there to pick us up when we fall and put us back in the saddle where we will continue to go on with you as, as our Lord and Savior. And Father, we ask you to give us uh, wisdom in imparting this message to the people. And, and, and we pray for the people out there in the audience that uh, they may get some ideas on what to do with the situation they're in. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Clarice, have you found out some more information about the Focus Clubhouse? Well, I have. I've got some information to deliver. You know, as you well know, because you were at our event, that we had the end of July, the 25th of July, at the Petroleum Club. It really came out good. Um, I thought the presentation went well. I think everybody had a good time. Did you have a good time, Bob? I had a, I had a good time. Yeah. How about you, Richard? I you learned were there? a lot. You learned a lot? Really enjoyed the meeting. Well, yeah, I did too. It was a lot of fun. There was some good food there. We, we had Senator Mills as our keynote speaker, and he is just a hoot. He really did a good job. He got the crowd involved, and mm -hmm. it, we had a good crowd. Um, the room was packed, and... Yeah. Uh, so, so I think everybody learned a little bit more about the clubhouse. We raised a good bit of money, um, not as much as what we were hoping for. So we're still out there with our hands out. And yeah. that's something that I'm having a hard time getting used to is walking up and asking people for money. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm getting better at it. Uh, so it, it's going to take some money to get this place open. Oh, and. Yes. That's what we're striving really hard for. But what I wanted to talk tonight about was other than um, the event and the success and the fact that that was our first big event but won't be our last, I can That's guarantee great. you That's that. Great. We'll, That's uh, we'll be doing some other small events where the community will be invited. They'll be free. It'll just be knowledge orientated. You know, we'll have maybe some drinks for sale or something like that, but, yeah. you know, not anything elaborate like we did at the, at yeah. the Petroleum I, I'm Club. Sure, I'm sure, I'm sure y'all going to have some more events at the Petroleum Club well, as we, we go on through the years. Right, you know? we will. We'll go there, and there's other places in Lafayette also to have, you know, nice places. City Club yeah. is another place, and uh, so one of the things, though, that I really want to stress is Louisiana's in crisis. Yes. The state's mental health system has gradually been broken over the weight of the financial cuts that they had to make and the psychiatric hospital closings and the shortage of practicing psychiatrists. I mean, mm -hmm. there's really not that many. Um, in 2018, Louisiana ranked eighth in prevalence of mental illness and 46th in access to care. 
Wow. Now that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One person dies every 13 hours in Louisiana due to suicide. Wow. We one, can one person every every 13 hours. Wow. Due to suicide. Well, now you terrible. know we can do better than that. Yes. I mean, we really can. Um that's why it's so important and, and such a passion of mine to to get this Focus Clubhouse up and off the ground. Um, just as a background to what Focus Clubhouse really is, um, it, it is a place where we will assist adults living with mental illness where they can come every day at no cost except for a small minimal fee for, for lunch, which we'll cook. They'll be served as if they're sitting in a restaurant. Um, they won't have to go through a buffet line or anything. And it really, that, that sounds like a small little thing, but somebody that... It means a lot. It, yeah, it does because, you know, you don't... First place, most people suffering and living with mental illness don't have a whole lot of money to spend, so they don't get out to restaurants that's, a lot. That's right. And they don't get served. They either wait on themselves or do without one of the two. Yeah, and, and that, there's a lot of respect. Right, right. It 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 does give you a, a chance of a feeling of respect. So mental illness is more common than any other public health concern and is the number one reason for hospital and admissions nationwide. Did wow. you know that? No. Uh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, it accounts <clears throat> for 26% of all lost time due to disability, more than any other illness. I, I knew uh, that one quarter of the population have a mental illness. Yeah, one in five. One in five. One in five Americans suffer from some sort of mental illness. It, it accounts for 20% of the global burden of disease, but only gets 3% of the world's health care budget. Yeah, wow. Now, you know, that's a big discrepancy there, too. Charity to mental illness falls far less than cancer, HIV, or muscular dystrophy. It's, it's just, you know, it, it's kind of like I said the last time I was on your show. You can walk up to somebody and say you've got cancer, and they, oh, we're so sorry, what can we do to help? But you can walk up to that same person and say, uh, I suffer from mental illness, and they, they say they're sorry, but as they're backing away from you, like yeah. they're afraid of you or something, right. you know, yeah. it's, it's terrible. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, the, it's so misunderstood, people, people don't understand what mental illness is all about. They don't understand, they just think that's where all the stigma comes from, and I know NAMI works hard which is National Alliance for Mental Illness, um, to get rid of the stigma, but it's still out there. It's still there. It's yep. still out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mental illness budgets continually to get gutted. Emergency rooms, jails, nursing homes are becoming the new psych facilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 44% it, of jail inmates and 37% of state and federal prisoners have been diagnosed with a mental illness. And, and don't forget the homeless population Absolutely. in San Francisco and, 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 and those, those uh, cities. You yeah, know. San Francisco, just, New York. I mean, any city. Right here in Lafayette, we have a home, homeless population. Yeah. And, I mean, it's sad, but, you know, it's not something that those people chose to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't choose to live homeless. They, they didn't make that choice. Circumstances caused it. And if you're suffering from mental illness, it's harder to get back up on your feet than if you're not suffering. Of course, You know, course. because it's, you, you just don't have the, the, the ability, the ability or the, um, the uh, motivation. The motivation, the ability, the opportunity. That was the word I was okay. searching for. Yeah. I, I tried. <laughs> yeah, I know you tried. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, 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 it's a terrible thing, homelessness, you know. It is. I, I, I just, I mean, I'm, thank you, Lord, that I've never been homeless, but I just can't imagine not having a place to lay my head down warm, dry, cool, whatever I need. 
uh, you know, it's, it's there. So, um, but we, we at Focus Clubhouse will, we're not a home, so it's a day program. It's going to mirror the regular business hours of like eight to five or nine to five, something like that. They will have an opportunity to get a light snack for breakfast. And then of course the lunch will be served. And while they're there all day, they won't be playing video games and watching TV and just hanging out. They'll actually be working side by side with a small staff to operate and run the clubhouse. So they have just as much input into what happens at that clubhouse. They have ownership of it, which builds confidence yeah. and builds at pride and, and, you know, makes them feel like they belong somewhere and yeah. somebody wants them there. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that's a big thing. It, it, it's so important to feel like you belong somewhere. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And so, you know, when, when Medicaid is the single largest payer of mental health services in the United States. So in 2016, when uh, Governor John Bell Edwards expanded Medicaid, it was great. It was a victory, but unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of professionals that, that treat mental illness that take Medicaid because the the payment for them is so low. So a vast majority of the doctors, psychiatrists, and therapists in, in the Louisiana, Lafayette, Acadiana area don't accept Medicaid. What about Medicare? I, I mean, being, I'm retired and I have Medicare and I, I mean, I have a supplement policy, you know, but yeah. um, I find it difficult to, to find places that'll take Medicare as well. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with these payments. Yeah. You know, it's government and it's a lot of bureaucracy. Yeah. So that's th this is all the reason that makes the clubhouse model so unique and indispensable because there is no cost to come to the clubhouse. There is only lunch and that is it. Everything else is provided by the clubhouse and that's the reason that our funding is so important. Corporate donations, private donations, of course we're holding fundraising events, um, grants. Uh, I'm working on a grant, two or three grants right now I awesome. got going. Yeah, awesome. I, I really am. I'm, I'll be submitting one within the, at least the next week and I hope to follow up with the other one right behind it. So we are really working hard and our goal is to have this open by the end of the year or first of next year, whichever way you want to call and that, it. Wow. And, and the members are Rachel Foreman that, that work with you? Rachel Foreman is a licensed clinical social worker. She's the vice president of Focus Clubhouse. I'm the president. And Sophie? And Sophie is a member, uh, a volunteer. And then we have uh, Kenny A. Bear and Jeremiah Sams and Nia Vernon that are also on our board of directors. And we're all working together as a team to find a place. So if anybody out there knows of anywhere that is reasonably cheap, mm -hmm. <laughs> but nice, uh, <laughs> let me know. Cause yeah. we are definitely, definitely looking, you know, we're not, we're not geared up to replace psychiatric care. Our doctors or counselors of or social not. workers. Of course not. I mean, that's not the object of the of the Focus Clubhouse. I mean, we're we're there to fill the gaps in because you go see your psychiatrist on the first of the month and he writes your script, you get your medicine. And then you don't see him again for another month or two. And then what do you do in the meantime? Exactly. What do well, you do? Who do you talk to in yeah, the meantime? Yeah, who do you talk to? Where do you go? What do you do? I mean, it, isolation is, is horrible it's, for anybody. That's right. But for someone suffering from mental illness, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's about 10 times worse. Yeah, it's about 10 times worse because those voices just start talking in your head just so that I think you can hear somebody, you know, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but well, yeah, 
Like sometimes uh, in my isolation, I'll call somebody just to hear a human exactly. voice. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So you find that too, Richard? That that you just get lonely? And that's when I want to go out and do something that doesn't cost money. Right. Right. And if it's raining, that means there's no walk, so I'm doing yep. my free weights. But that's kind of very limited, shall we say? And of course, our veterans could really use something like this because you know they got the VA center up in Alexandria mm -hmm. and the one on Ambassador and the other one on Saint Julian, but they need to reach out, and this would be very helpful for them. And explain what your son is doing with the Focus Clubhouse. Um, <clears throat> well, he's he's the poster child, I guess you want to call it, because yeah. um, he actually. Uh, was in a clubhouse um, called Key Clubhouse when he lived in Miami. And um, I want to stress, this is not a program that he and I woke up one morning and decided to start. This program's been around since 1948. Um, it started in New York City. Uh, and we are a member of Clubhouse International. So it is a proven program. And um, it wouldn't have worked and been around for 70 some odd years if it didn't work. Uh, yeah, Fountain yeah. House is still open today. That was the first clubhouse. And uh, like I said, it's located in New York City and it's still open today. And there's about 300 or a little over 300 more clubhouses throughout the United States and around the world. They're in New Zealand, in Africa. I mean, they're everywhere. That's awesome. So it, it definitely is you know, a place where they can be find friends and mm -hmm. opportunities, resources, hope, a purpose for their life where they know they belong. And, you know, they they have jobs. They they have it gives them a sense of responsibility, you know, I mean and, and self esteem. Exactly. Builds up their confidence and their self esteem. So um one of one of the other stats I wanted to bring out, in 2016, uh, there was a study done of Clubhouse members, and it was found that after one year of membership, 77% of the members had no admission to psychiatric hospitals. 82% of those had no visit to emergency rooms for, co for crisis stabilization. Mm -hmm. And 85% had no interaction with any law enforcement calls. Wow, that's awesome. So that is awesome. And, and that's another thing that we need to make the police forces aware of. And they're doing a good job with training their officers uh, to know how to react when they get called to a, a house that has someone that's disturbing the peace or whatever you know, with yeah. mental illness. They know how to how to de de um, escalate rather than escalate the situation. So yeah. But they still need more training they too. They do. They right. need more training, but again, there comes money. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So um we we really just want to stress that you know we're looking for people that want to get involved. You want to volunteer. You you you've got um, you want to become a board member. You want to uh, just to help drive the vision of the clubhouse. The more people we have out there talking about the clubhouse, the more prevalent it will become. And, you know, I mean, we, any legal or financial skills that you have, we could definitely use. Uh, we are an official 501c3, so we are a nonprofit. We are all up to date and all legal. If you have anything you'd like to donate, um, you know, used furniture, used office equipment, computers, copiers, transport vans. I mean, we're looking for a location on a bus route because I'm gonna say 85% of the people that will be members and be attending won't, won't, have cars. won't have cars and don't drive, so they'll need, but you know, we will also do transportation. Um, that's probably further down the road. My goal right now is just to find a building, get it inhabitable and open the doors and start 
yeah. at least you have to start somewhere and right. we're we're doing baby steps one step at a time but we're getting there yeah. um we we are getting there uh did it seem like some of the uh leaders of the community were interested in the focus club yeah they are i mean we've talked uh mayor joe robido stopped by he had another appointment so he only stayed for a minute um but he came by we had vincent pierre there um who's a state representative he was there and Good. we had some prominent citizens that mm -hmm were there that were interested. Lou Rolfus was there. Lou Rolfus was there. Fred Mills, Senator Fred Right, Mills. Senator Fred Mills was there. Um, um, Diane Allen Mouton, or Mouton Allen was there. She is the um, head of the National Coalition of Business Institute. She oh, was there. Okay. And she works with the community on diversity and coming together as a consolidated group we're trying to get rid of all the hate, hatred and racism and, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. kind of stuff in the community. She's a fantastic person. Yeah. Um, Dee Stanley, uh, Blue's husband, oh, was yeah. there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's some, some pretty <clears throat> prominent people there. Right, right. So we definitely got the word out um, to the people. And, and a lot of people couldn't come. Uh, because they had prior commitments or whatever. It's hard to find something, uh, pick a date where nothing else is going on in Louisiana. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I especially think that's one Lafayette. of the biggest challenges. <laughs> yeah, especially Lafayette. Yes, especially Lafayette, you know. So we're coming up into the fall festival season here shortly. So we'll be out and about. And I'm also, um, Focus Clubhouse is scheduled in October, there's a big diversity uh, job fair that uh, the Louisiana Economic Development Authority, LIDA, hosts, and we'll be there as a resource oh, good. Um, with information. Well, will y'all have a booth out there? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have a table and uh, have brochures to pass out and, um, you know, when is this now? It's, I don't remember the exact date, but it's in October sometime. October, okay, October. But, um, it's not far away. No, it's not. No, it's Unfortunately, not. this year's almost over. I can't believe it. I know, it went by fast. Oh, it sure did. The older about, you get, the faster it goes. <laughs> yeah. What about a festival at Katie Ann's in Gerard Park? Are you planning to have a booth there? Um, I really haven't looked into it, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to put, setting up a table anywhere. You know, okay. um, when, when is that, Richard? Uh, the second weekend in October. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. That's the, yeah, I know which one you're talking about in now. In Gerard Park. Yeah. I, I've been to that. A lot of people go there. Oh, so they do. You can get do. good visibility. Yeah, they do. What that's about any idea. of the city parish uh, council members? Were they there the night of the fundraiser? I don't think so. They were invited, but um, I don't believe that they made it. Of course, we, we know this is election year and election season now, so mm -hmm. they're all busy with their own fundraisers yeah. and, you know, that kind of thing. But um, I've talked to a couple of them. They are aware. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Kenneth Boudreau is definitely interested and willing to help, and I'm, I'm trying Good. to get a meeting set up with him for um, to help with finding a location because he has a lot of information on adjudicated properties or, okay. or blighted properties. Um, and I talked with a gentleman last night. Uh, St. Martin had a uh, uh, forum for candidates running uh, for everything. I oh, mean, really? Yeah. I'm uh, from St. Martinville. You are? Yeah. You live born in San Martinville? I don't live in San Martinville. Oh, okay. <laughs> born and raised in San Martinville. Oh, okay. You know yeah. one of the council members, Mike Fusilier. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But uh, Kenneth Bo uh not Kenneth Boudreaux, Gerald Boudreau was there because part of uh, his district as as a senator is in is in St. Martin Parish. But okay. um, So I had an opportunity to kind of push the clubhouse and mention it a couple of times to a few people last night. Yeah. And I take that it, I take that opportunity every chance I get. I, I'm constantly out there on the streets talking about it. Yeah. Um, I did a radio interview with KAJN. Yeah. Um, 
Christian uh-huh. Radio, and I did a 15-minute uh, TV interview with KAJN. Okay. Um, and actually had a lady call me um, the other day, not and said she had seen me on TV and wanted to know she has a son that suffers from schizophrenia and wanted to know more information. It broke my heart to tell her we weren't open yet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it I really know. did. I know. So, There's a lot of mothers that, that, yeah. that, that have to deal with, with their kids. With, with oh, their I know. Illnesses. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, well, like I said, Brian is the poster child of this. He, he just swears that if it hadn't have been for Key Clubhouse in Miami, he wouldn't be here today. He'd yeah, be exactly. I yeah. mean, it. Uh, yeah. It's it's an amazing tool. It just it's hard to think that just having a place to go every day and, and socialize and socialize and make friends and build relationships is so important because. People that don't suffer from mental illness take all that for granted. Exactly. I mean, they don't even think about it. They go to work every day. They go, if they don't work, they're a stay-at-home mom. Their husband works. They socialize with his workforce. They, you know, they go to football practices, football games. They have those opportunities where people living with mental illness, especially disabled people living with mental illness, yes, don't uh, have that opportunity. No, they, they're just at home uh, if they have a roof over their head. Yeah, yeah they're if lucky. If they're lucky to have a roof over their head, they just stay at home and maybe watch TV for mm-hmm. a while. So after a while, they're going out of their mind with nothing to do and nobody to talk to. You absolutely, know? Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and it sounds like this focused clubhouse I'm 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 ten thousand percent for it because it would be a place for me to go. Absolutely, because I live in isolation, right. you know. Right. Absolutely, so you good, know, you and know? Richard both are welcome there anytime. And and, and also, uh, we would like to say if you are watching out there and if you're interested in Focus Cup Clubhouse, uh, we also meet uh, on the. Uh, uh, but with NAMI, National Alliance for the Mentally Ill, who's working with Focus Clubhouse, and we meet the first and third Sundays of every every uh, month. Richard, can you? We meet at the <clears throat> Extra Mile, <clears throat> the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month from 1.15 to 2.15 p.m. at 6.16 Stewart, right there by East Half and Stewart, and that's 115 to 215. And on the Sundays, first and third Sundays from 6 to 7.30 p.m., these are both the connection support groups for NAMI. And also on Sundays, there's the friends and family of those with mental health issues that meets across the hall. And those are located at First Lutheran Church at 301 West Farrell Road. Fridays, the Schizophrenia Alliance of America meets 9 a.m. <clears throat> to 10 a.m. also at the extra mile. Oh, okay. 9 a.m. So you got to be up early. Yeah. To 10 a.m. and then they're having a ca- uh, consumer council meeting tomorrow also for an hour. But I think the Focus Clubhouse could really help this entire community because our veterans. Oh, definitely. Those who are marginalized, those who are isolated, don't have anywhere to go, need some job training. And I have a friend who does that. She has her own company called Employment Hub. Her name is Marilyn Martin. Okay. I've already told her about Focus Clubhouse. Awesome. Because we do have a program where we will... Uh, it's called transitional employment. And for those that want to try to go back to work, I think this is a great program. We go out into the community. Um, we being the board members are, are the executive director and staff and find employers that are willing to hire someone that has a mental illness. And then we learn the job and train the, uh, the member of the clubhouse and what makes it a win-win for everybody is the fact that if the member is sick and can't get to work, 
then the staff member that actually trained them goes and does their their job for that day. That, I've never cool. heard so, that before. That so is it, phenomenal. it really works great for the employer because they're never short staff that way, you yeah. know. And I mean, we all know that people who suffer from mental illness, unfortunately, are going to die sooner than a person that doesn't have mental illness because they don't take care of themselves as well and they don't exercise, they don't eat right, so their life expectancy isn't near as long as uh, a person that doesn't suffer from the disease. So it really is unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. And your son discovered this. Well, yes, he did. Um, uh -huh. it, and you know, it really, like I said, he says it saved his life, mm -hmm. but, and, and I believe it did, but, it wasn't until I quit helping him, and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, was just say, I don't know what to tell you, I don't have any more money, I'm not giving you any more money, yeah. mm -hmm. figure it out. You know, right. I mean, he, a lot of people self-medicate with alcohol and drugs, right. and he was no different. He, he chose that. I mean, we didn't even find out that he was officially diagnosed until his, mid thirties, mm -hmm. you know, but the more involved I get with this program and the more I'm around him now that he's been back in Louisiana for a couple of years, um, I, I can look back over his childhood and see a lot of signs that I didn't understand mm -hmm. at the time, but now I, I get where they were coming from, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, I mean, if you're unsure, if, someone in your family has mental illness, go have them evaluated. Go to Tyler, if nothing else. They take Medicaid and they will evaluate them if you don't have insurance and a, and a person that you can trust to, to evaluate them. Don't, you know, one in five Americans suffer from mental illness. This is nothing to be ashamed of. It, it's no more than if you had cancer or HIV or um, any kind of disease. I mean, it's nothing to be ashamed of. No. It's, it's terrible the way people pick on the mental ill, you know, I mean, and our prisons, oh my God, it's, they're full. They're full of people that mm. don't need to be in there. They need to be out and building a life around people that care, not in prison. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of them are there for marijuana charges. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> really? You know, so um, I don't know what else to, uh, you know, I just, I'm so passionate about this and I, I mean, I don't know. Well, well you writing grants, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm jumping in. What are um, you writing, who are you writing the grants um, to? Well, I'd rather not oh, I'm publicize sorry. I'm that sorry. right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a tricky you process. Know that, but... Yeah, I, I think I'll keep that underneath my hat for, right. for, for okay. a while. Now, I'll be glad to come back and tell you when we get the grant okay. to it. Right. <laughs> It was awarded from. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but until then, I think we'll just keep that between us. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, the main uh, thing is getting the word out, and there's a absolutely. talk radio station called KPEL 96.5. Uh huh. They have a morning talk show program. I've even been able to call through a few times, and then they have one in the afternoon oh, wow. with different uh, radio personalities uh -huh. on there. Um, I don't have their number offhand, but it's in my phone. Okay, well, that'd I'll, be a uh, good place to yeah. plug into. I'll reach out to them and see if we can't get on that too. Um, and, 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 and Clarice, you ever thought of uh, Channel Ten or? Well, I am going to start um, <laughs> trying to reach out to the local stations: Channel Ten, KATC, uh, KADN, Channel Fifteen, Fox News. Um, I am going to reach out to those. It, I, I just wanted a little bit more under my belt first okay. with, right. with more, you know, with this big event behind us now and then maybe get one or two smaller events where yeah. in the community where I can invite them out to cover the event. Yeah. Yes. Um, for some reason, we didn't get that done for the big event. We should have had television coverage there then, but we, yeah. 
it, we dropped the ball and you know it was well, our first one and we yeah, learned yeah. you know we had a good review the board did on what went well what what we needed to improve on mm -hmm. and you know i mean we're all new to the nonprofit world and new to fundraising and this is all new to all of us and uh you know everybody yeah. but myself has a job a full-time job you yeah. know that they have to go to every day so you know we're taking baby steps but rest assured good lord willing in the creek don't rise as my mom used to say years ago <laughs> yeah. uh, this yes. clubhouse will will open now i know the creek rises here in louisiana a whole yeah, lot we're, yeah <laughs> we're very aware of that yeah oh, you're yeah. very aware of that huh yeah. but um you know it it just it just is amazing and i mean i'm so happy that the community is behind us and and people are reaching out to us and saying, hey, come talk to us here, come talk to us there, like this diversity uh, job fair thing and, you know, um, the KAJN interviews and being here with you guys, this is such a blessing to us to be able to do this. Thank you. Now, there's another venue too I just thought of the um Carly, the mayor that's running, right, candidate right. for mayor. Have you approached her? I have. I've talked to her. She, I, I met her when she first started running, and she's been so busy with her campaign. Oh yeah. And I understand now. I'm going to. She's having an event at the Spoonbill, uh, the first part of September. I have it saved in my phone. Um, and I'm going to go to that. So there ought to be a lot of people there. I'm going to go armed with business cards and Good. brochures and uh, my name tag and my mouth, <laughs> which never shuts up. Where's uh, the spoon, Bill? It's downtown at the, it's where the old filling station used to be. Oh, I know exactly where that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you could send me details on that, I would like to. Okay, attend. I sure will. I'll share it. It's on Facebook. Um, okay. But, I, I will definitely share it. And I I go to a lot of these campaign rallies and and things like that. And I do that, one, I'm interested, and I'm interested in helping Louisiana and, you know, bettering our economy and bettering our, our city, Lafayette and the surrounding Acadiana area. But, mm -hmm. and you can only do that and you can only vote intelligently you know you should learn about the candidates and it's not a matter of whether you're a republican or a democrat right. it's a matter of who can do the best job exactly. and, and who can handle the pressure of it it's not a fun job i mean no, i no. wouldn't think being mayor president would be i mean it wouldn't be unfun but you know or not fun but it, it's going to be a lot of pressure too it's going to be a lot work. of pressure and a lot of work. Yeah, long hours. So, um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's really needed here in the community, and I can rest assured that it's it's going to happen. It's and going to happen. We have a message board for nonprofits here, so you can talk to Jacob or Sahid right after the show to get your message out that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's on that's on AOC. That's free. Okay. You know, like they have uh, when nobody's on 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 the air, they have these message boards that come on okay. the air okay. about about uh, anywhere from uh, anything nonprofit or anything. Okay, you know? so yeah, we need to do a PSA spot on then mm -hmm. to get that up and running. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll take care of that. Thank you, Richard. Well, I appreciate that. This is why it's that. named AOC Community Media. And as I just got reminded the other day, I got a text from someone in the Philippines about depression. So huh. I sent them a link off the NAMI website to get them started. And I don't know if they have clubhouses in the Philippines. I'm not sure. I can sure check out check that, it out because yeah. we. Um, Clubhouse International's website has a, a way you can go and search, okay. you know, by just putting in the city or state that you're looking for, and uh, it'll pull up and tell you everything, every one of them that are in there. Good. Um, you know, and I think they even have a couple of spots where they mention places like us. We're, we're considered a startup clubhouse. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not sure if we made the the website yet but if we haven't we will shortly 
because we're getting really close to um, to that magic day, and I guarantee you all of Louisiana will know it because I'll be <laughs> shouting from Good. the rooftops. And what is the Clubhouse International website for those who are watching? It is Clubhouse dash I N T L, the abbreviation for international dot org. Okay, Clubhouse dash I N T L. Okay, got it. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, and then, of course, Focus Clubhouse has a website as well, and I'll be adding um, some pictures from the event that we just had and um, some other information. We're going to update our website, and our website is focusclubhouse.org, and then we're on Facebook, and we have a Facebook page called Focus Clubhouse. You can um, check us out there. But that's probably the easiest and fastest way. Okay. But we do keep it updated about what we're doing, where we're going to be. Um, Jaylen uh, has just been so gracious as to offer to help us with our Facebook. Yes, yeah, she's a terrific lady. Yes, yeah, she awesome. is. Um, and she's, you know, she's been been helping us with different flyers and information and postings on the on the Facebook page. So, yeah. and I try to post interesting articles I run across on mental illness. So, yeah. Um, you know, the the veterans, I I'm so glad you brought that up, Richard. The veterans mm -hmm. the that suffer from PTSD. This is this will be a place where they will really flourish and Good. Actually, one of the guests um, I spoke with the other day because I needed to send him his um, tax, de tax deductible donation letter for stuff that he purchased at the live auction. He um, He's a veteran, and he's associated with a lot of veterans, and so I'm going to hook back up with him yeah. and see okay. if I can't get my foot in the door. And yeah. uh, I'm going to start calling some of the like places like Compass and other mental uh, oceans. oceans oceans and you know the the big um, ones in town and see if I can't get in to to do presentations on on Focus Clubhouse to get those referrals when we are open yeah so I mean I'm busy I'm working I see hard that wow. you're busy I bet you got a full time job at all this yes, yes sir I is. certainly do I didn't what, realize what that do you it do? was you go to bed at, at 9 o'clock <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you get a cup of coffee and you start working yep, you get on the that's, ball that's just about what what I do. Awesome. I, I don't go to bed at nine though, but <laughs> <laughs> and I get up really early uh, in some people's standards. I just, my body's just used to waking up. I'm a morning person. Yeah. I'm not mm -hmm. a night person. I'm, a, I'm more of a night person. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can stay up past nine o'clock, but I'm, I'm relaxing watching TV. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm right. not working. Uh, I, my brain works best in the morning. So well, I ran into a gentleman named uh, Mr. Walker, Bill Walker, who's a 94-year-old veteran, and he's still publishing and writing. Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to get you his information. Yeah. You can reach out to him. Uh, there's another veteran, Jim Crumling. Are you familiar with uh -uh. him? No, but uh, anybody that can help me get through those doors, I will definitely okay. speak. With okay, because I'll get you that information tonight. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm working hard to to include the veterans, to include, I, I've already been told that Tyler will do referrals to us. I mean, getting the people, getting the members is not going to be the hard part. That's, I think the word will get out that <coughs> once we're open, and, and I honestly believe that the donations will... Come we'll in. be, we'll be there too. You know, uh, I know you're a man of God, and and uh, I just know that He's going to provide for us. Yeah. He's gonna, yes. He's, yes. You know, this is His timing, not mine. As much as I want to snap my fingers and say, "Okay, let's get this show on the uh, road," but it's not in our time. But it's, it's his not. Time. It's His exactly. time, and exactly. and it's His it's His way, and uh, I'm I'm subdued to that, or yeah accepting it, that yeah it, it, it's a word it's a worthy uh thing you know yeah it surely is so yeah. what about receptivity by 
church organizations and related nonprofits to what we're doing? Well, I, I am trying to reach out to some of them. Um, I am member, I'm a member of Lano. Well, I say I, Focus Clubhouse is a member of Lano, which is Louisiana nonprofit organization. Uh, awesome. And a lot, I mean, all the nonprofits, <clears throat> I won't say all of them, but there's a good many of them that, that belong to Lano. And so I'm going to try to see if I can't find some kind of list or something. Um, and of course, then the state did this this year. They haven't done much with it that I can see, but they formed a coalition for mental illness. Really? Um, yeah, the, Linda with the Extra Mile is a member. I, we are a member. Um, there's a lot of prominent uh, nonprofits that are a member of that mental illness coalition. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And so, I mean, we had one good meeting and then it's, you know, I mean, again, it's an election year and the governor's being reelected, hopefully. And, uh, you know, so everybody's busy, but I'm going to uh, reach out to that as well. Good. So, and then the lady that you talked about that does the schizophrenia training. Uh, Sandy, Sandy Demeter. Chick. Yeah, she reached out to me and is interested in putting a class in, um, in the clubhouse. And so... Wow. We um, we are talking and planning on meeting next week with her. Okay. Okay. Um, awesome. Wow. Yeah. So that will that will be another thing. Now that might be an extracurricular thing after the the actual scheduled work day, you mm -hmm. know. But for a couple of times a week or something like that, I haven't figured out exactly how that that can fit in and us stay in compliance with the clubhouse model itself, yeah. you know, because mm -hmm. we can't deviate from that because we want to become accredited for yeah. through clubhouse international. Right. So we're, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. And, uh, to have classes like that during the actual work day wouldn't, uh, wouldn't really fly too well. We wouldn't want to interfere no, with, uh -uh. With, with the norm. Yeah, it, it has to stay on the clubhouse model, so. Yeah. But um, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. I mean, because we'll have evening socials, you know, and weekend trips and stuff like that for the, oh, for oh, the members. Oh, that's right. Y'all you, going to have weekend trips for yeah, the members. Yeah, That'd we're going to do, um, well, what do you call them? Uh, road trips? Or road trips, <laughs> yeah. Okay. For lack of better, you know, we'll take them bowling, go see a movie, do it in a group setting where, yeah. you know, they can share the experience with their friends that they've made at the clubhouse. Yeah. You know, so, and then, you know, once a week or so we'll have, and, and another thing I want to stress, this is one of the things that I love about the clubhouse is we are open for every holiday, Christmas day, Thanksgiving day, you know, whatever, Easter, um, yeah. Easter, where families normally get together and celebrate 4th of July, Memorial Day, mm -hmm. those kind of things, no matter what time, what the day falls on, we will be open. Normally we're a Monday through Friday, but if Christmas Day falls on a Sunday, we will be open to celebrate Christmas Day that okay. Sunday Good. for our members. Good. That's That's so, um... We just we just want to take care of them and you know give them the the life that they deserve. Everybody deserves a good life with good relationships. Of course, and everybody deserves a good life and yeah. to be loved and wanted. So, mm -hmm. and our outreach unit is another great unit that we have where if a member's coming for a week at a time and then all of a sudden doesn't show up for two or three days we call them and make sure that they're doing okay you oh, know make yeah. sure that they don't need something you know if if they do have a, a crisis and they do wind up in the hospital we go visit them in the hospital wow so that again Excellent. they're not isolated that they know people care about them and want them yeah so and, and th this sounds like a worthy organization to belong to how would one become a, a member Anyone diagnosed with 
mental illness can become a member. Mm -hmm. it, that's all it takes is a simple, uh, well, it's not simple, but a, a diagnosis. You have to have a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. There is an application process where they fill out an application, they're given a tour. It's their choice. This is not a forced thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't mm -hmm. have to come, but uh, it, it is a great opportunity for them to make friends, be around people uh, with like minds and, mm. you know, learn new skills, enhance the skills they already have. Uh, we'll have newsletters, we'll have uh, communications unit, uh, maintenance unit. Um, we'll have different people come in to do arts and crafts classes, you know, and so just all kinds of things are going to go on. Excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. That's excellent, Kirby. Well, I'm, I'm proud of how far we've come. We incorporated a year ago last July, and uh, it's, it seems like an awfully long time, at least to me it does. I really thought it would go faster. Well, it takes time. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm learning that I have to calm down yeah. and understand that, you know, baby steps, it, it all takes time. Yes. When I first mentioned clubhouse everybody's like what is a clubhouse and, yeah you know mm -hmm. so it takes time to educate the public yeah. about what it is everybody knows there's a mental health crisis yeah. but they don't know about one of the better ways in my opinion to help yeah people fix know there's it. a mental health crisis they don't know what to do about it they exactly. don't they don't know what to do about it yeah. and this is a road to recovery you can recover I yes. don't say you'll ever be healed 100%, but you can recover and you can live with it without wanting to commit suicide every time you turn around. Yeah. Uh, I've been dealing with schizophrenia for 50 years, and like like you mentioned that I'm a man of God, you know. Uh, I know God puts up with me, you know, so I'm <laughs> glad about that, and, and, and that has been my success. And, and, and I'm 100% behind the clubhouse, you know. Uh, we need to socialize, you know. Yes. We can't be isolated all the time, you know. It's not a good thing. Man would, you know, like, uh, like uh, in the Bible, God says it's not good for man to be alone. You That's know? right. He told that to Adam and, and created a helpmate for Adam, you know. It's not good for us as humans to be by ourselves, no, nope, you know? it sure no. isn't. And no. and and and, and when, when when you socialize, there's a chemical change that happens in your brain, the serotonins and mm -hmm. the dopamines and everything, and they make you feel pleasurable. That's you know? right. They make it you feel good. Brings and the joy to your yes, life. Brings the joy, yes. and like you said earlier, it makes you feel wanted, makes yes. you feel loved, and you yes. know those are emotions everybody needs. Absolutely. Whether you have a mental disorder or not, you know we all need that. That's right. We sure do. I know I want to be loved, and I want to be wanted, and I want to be missed if I'm not someplace, you yeah, know, exactly. where I normally would be. So you know, I mean, and they're they're no people living with mental illness are no different they're they're really not they want the same things everybody else wants exactly. yeah. they just don't have the same opportunities to get them that everybody else exactly has. and focus clubhouse will be an answer it may not answer everything but it will answer 90 percent of it yeah yeah uh, I, i'm i'm anxious for to, to go visit it and and, and, and be part of it and everything. I'm sure Richard is too. Yes, yes, yes. Well, being the computer genius that Bob claims you are. <laughs> yeah, he is. I just he finished is. refurbing. I stand by my word. Okay, <laughs> I, I you, don't doubt it. You can ask Lucy about that too. I just fixed her laptop to oh, make it work great. again. And you know, I've got an old laptop that I'm going to bring you. It, okay. It's an old PC and I've held on to it and held on to it. I've never known why I didn't throw it away, but now I know. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to bring it to you, let you clean it up and refurbish it, get it working, get, uh, it, work. get it updated, and we'll put that in the clubhouse. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Have any of the clubhouses had a basic computer skills instruction or classes? I'm not sure, but we can, We. I mean, we're all independent. So we, you know, as long as we follow the clubhouse model that, right. that the member are working side by side with the staff in in the operation right. you know they 
they have we can have classes so Good. definitely we can do that and along with the classes we have support groups in the clubhouse model or is that how they do they allow support groups for mental health conditions no it's it there's no there the only thing that they would would be the peer to peer which is which is what the basic concept of the whole clubhouse is okay. i mean yeah. we help Good. the Take members care of each other. exactly care for we each help other. the members so they can help each other Good. and that's the whole premise of of the clubhouse the staff is there to assist the members and teach them how to do this so like brian when he was in the key clubhouse he ran the culinary unit but he actually taught other members how to do the chopping and how Good. to do the cooking and all that Good. so he was helping other members by teaching them what he had learned excellent so, but Clories, it, it was an honor to have you thank, thank you. you thank you so thank much you. richard i really appreciate it thank you bob i i've enjoyed it i enjoy it every time i come yeah we thank you it's 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 a really really good thing and and, and, and I would like to talk to people that I'm sure if, if you have a male diagnosis or not, you're interested, but especially to the people with a male diagnosis, if you're by yourself and isolated and don't know where to turn anything, and, and, and of course there's tremendous injustice in the world, and, 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 and people with mental illness are more victims than, than anything and and if you have been unjustly treated and you're mad that there's no god in it just ask him to prove to you uh, that he's real okay i said wow. prove okay that's good wow. we made it. We made it. <laughs> that was fun.